fascinating, interesting debate show is live yeah. in the huddle. Oh, baby, it's going down right now in the huddle. And we are back for episode, I believe it's episode 250 something or 260 something you know it's been a minute but we've been knocking out these episodes i don't even know what episode it is 264 to be exact and man when we talk about sports galore it's going down today because training camp has started in the nfl some teams reported a couple days ago but everybody has at least reported by today and there's a lot of headlines going on in the nfl i'm pretty sure we're going to talk about those headlines in full detail Man, oh man, I smell it, bro. I smell the football season coming and arising. And even though I smell the barbecue, I smell the football season as well. And before I even introduce my co-host, I do want to start with a shout out. I want to shout out my aunt and Bradshaw. Okay. It was her birthday. We had a family event in Virginia. I had a good time. I ate well. I had a nice steak and mashed potatoes, bro. So listen, man, I had a good time over there. I want to salute to her. She always treated me well when I came down to Virginia. Anytime I go to Virginia, she always treats me with the best hospitality there is. Sometimes you go to people's house and they act like you never, you don't know what food is. They don't even offer you food. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know, I'm hungry now. Nah, not with Ann. Ann always made sure, you know, I ate well and I was comfortable like my second home. So salute to her. I had a good time. But guess what? I am locked in right now to the show that we have for you. And without further ado, I'm going to shut the hell up. I'm going to pass the mic over to my co-host, Zach, in the building. Well, what's going on, my guy? Happy to be here, as always, in the huddle, Can You Dig Sports Radio. Uh, it's a very exciting time. As you said, every year, I know the same thing happens, but it just is so refreshing seeing the pictures of all these players, these familiar faces that you know, but you haven't really thought about in a few months, just from all across the league, walking into training camp, getting ready to go, a ton of first-year head coaches in the NFL getting ready uh, for for their first go around. And we are just about a little bit more than a month away from the start of the NFL season. And, uh, you know, on this show, we're going to be talking a lot, of, a lot of NFL. Can't wait for that. It's an exciting time. Happy to be here as always. Zay, what's going on, my guy? Hey, you know, I'm always in paradise, always, you know, looking forward to new better things in the world, especially the way the NFL is moving. Zach alluded to it, the youth movement. And these coaches are is, is starting to begin. I think it began a few years back, but you know you're starting to see more and more young head coaches getting that uh that nod over a lot of these veteran coaches that we've known for decades almost. So it's good to see, you know, it's, it's good to see the NFL finally going after younger coaches. But when you know that has always been looked at, who's the most savvy? Who's the most knowledgeable? Who's the most uh exper experienced coach out there to put on our team? So it's nice to see. Think about what has happened since the last time an NFL game was being played. You know, we're seeing Devontae Adams in a Raider thread. We are seeing Deshaun Watson now in a Browns jersey. We're seeing A.J. Brown uh, suiting up for the Philadelphia Eagles. Tyreek Hill suiting up for the Miami Dolphins. Even Kenny Pickett suiting up for his hometown Pittsburgh Steelers as a Pitt alum. There are just so many new guys with new teams that it really just reminds you how things could be looking a little bit different in the NFL this year. And from our perspective, that's always super fascinating. We know that over the uh, past few years, one thing that has made the NFL so appealing to the viewer has just been how competitive is it is, how high and how uh, high leverage and how important every game feels as well. And uh, it just is a reminder, you know, we're right around the corner from the start of the season. I can't wait. Basketball, you taking notes? Regular season? You know what I'm saying? You taking notes regular season in the NBA? Are you? Because guess what? It's going down. And speaking of Kenny Pickett, somebody's out there cotton picking mine, and we're going to find out who it is. Kyler Murray just got a $230 million extension. Includes a very unprecedented independent study clause. An independent study clause. Who does this make look worse? Kyler Murray or the Arizona Cardinals? And Zach, I would love for you to do the honors to kick us off. Yeah, you guys know we've been doing the show a pretty long time now. And one opinion I've always stood very firm on is when it comes to the quarterback position, that is the one position where I just don't like to take any risks, especially when you're paying someone $230 million, about 150 of that guaranteed. And when it comes to this, it's obviously a huge red flag, maybe the biggest red flag in the history of red flags in the NFL when it comes to quarterbacks. And if you want to become a great quarterback, you are going to have to put the work in. It's no coincidence why Tom Brady and Peyton Manning and Patrick Mahomes, these guys 
who have had so much success in the NFL, they're just addicted to football. Literally, like four hours, they do that in their sleep. In the NFL, it's interesting. It's in the CBA that you get off on Tuesdays, but on Mondays, if you win a lot of the times, you get off too. And most quarterback rooms are required to watch at least three hours of film on their opponent before they even meet with their coaches on Wednesday to start up a game plan. And the fact that the Cardinals had to put this clause into the contract, like that's a huge red flag. And when I look at Kyler Murray, there have been a ton of red flags on this guy for me throughout the last few years. When you look at the fact that going into last season, the Cardinals had to overpay for guys like J.J. Watt and A.J. Green, whose best days were behind them, and they had to bring them in to improve their leadership. You look at that embarrassment of a playoff game against the Los Angeles Rams when with five minutes left, I'm not even talking about the performance and how bad that was. But with five minutes left in that game, Kyler Murray just told Colt McCoy, you're going in. I'm done. I'm I'm done. I I quit. I'm not playing anymore. And then you look at that Chris Mortensen report in January that comes out and it says, oh, uh, the Cardinals, uh, 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 many people in the Cardinals organization believe that Kyler Murray is a self-centered, immature finger pointer. Like when you're comparing Kyler Murray to all of the other guys making similar money than him, Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes. Aaron Rodgers, even Matthew Stafford, who we had a ton of red flags about when he was in Detroit. Oh, could this guy win? He's been a a quarterback for 10 to 12 years and he hasn't won a playoff game. And even at times last year, late in the season, Matthew Stafford was struggling, throwing interceptions, bad ones against Baltimore, losing the Rams their last game of the regular season against San Francisco. But when the lights turned on and they needed him the most, he played a great stretch of football, helping the Rams win a Super Bowl. He earned that contract, and Kyler Murray has done nothing for me to earn a contract and all these red flags. Like, I blame, I blame it on the Cardinals. I really do. It really reminds me why teams like the Cardinals who decide to give Kyler Murray this money, teams like the Browns who decide to give Deshaun Watson, who has half of the massage therapists in Houston going after him for bad, bad things, they decide to give him $230 million guaranteed. It's no coincidence why teams like the Browns Teams like the Cardinals have just been a disgrace for the last 20 to 25 years. I don't think a team like the Steelers, I don't think a team like the Packers, I don't think a team like the Patriots would give Kyler Murray this money. And I'm dumbfounded by it, honestly, with the amount of red flags this guy has. I think the Cardinals are in trouble. You know, I want to say I was surprised when I saw the clause and the fact that it got released, but I really wasn't knowing everything we know about Kyler Murray already. And I'll leave it at that. I blame the Cardinals, you know, Kyler I, he was chasing the bag. He wanted to get the money. Good for him. I don't root against people to get to to not get paid, but in a salary cap league, when every financial decision you're making impacts the rest of your team and what you're going to do for the future, um, it's concerning. And I, I I didn't love the contract, and I think that the cause makes it even worse. And if I were the Cardinals, I'd be very nervous. I really would. Zay, you up, brother? So I actually think, um, based on a question, who does this make look worse, Kyler Murray or the Cardinals? I think Kyler Murray looks really bad in this case. You know, I think the money the Cardinals have shown us year in, year out, that they don't make the best decisions when it comes to salary cap or their, their money situations. They'll give anybody a really big bag. And I think Kyler Murray being the quarterback that supposed to be the franchise quarterback of this team, you have to give him that money because you don't see anybody else out there that could be there uh, franchise quarterback, but you're get you get disappointed as an organization when you see that Kyler Murray, a guy who's very talented, a guy who's able to read, the, who's able to do more than just throw the football, but also move on his feet and is a mobile quarterback, is not studying the game of football um intensely like he's supposed to. The quarterback position is that one position where you need to see how the other opponents' defenses are playing you. you. Have to read the first half, see how you could change, see how you could be different by watching a lot of film or watching studying a lot of tape, not only from your play, but from other opposing teams play throughout the season and throughout many seasons, or throughout the, what the coordinators usually do, what's their like nuances, what's something they always um go to. Is it coverage? Is it blitz? That's the quarterback but like knowing he's supposed to know all of that. And the fact that you have to put an independent study clause is very daunting to say the least. I understand how talented a kid is. We all believe he's talented, but the fact that you're not willing to sacrifice hours to put into your craft is what's really difficult to to kind of unfortunately it's really difficult to read, especially when it's going in the media after you sign a two hundred thirty million dollar extension. To have that being read out in the media, it looks um baffling. It looks it looks ridiculous. Very childish, you know. It's a very immature thing that you need that study clause so in order to you really look at the game and re- and see it. 
now we have a, a understanding on why the Arizona Cardinals fall off in the second half of the season because the kid's not doing tape. His stats from the first half to the second half is horrendous. And we've seen it on a year-to-year basis. He's not a second-half player. Now we see because he's not studying the game as a quarterback should be doing. And it just sucks that we had to find out in this stature. Yeah, I'm going to say that the Cardinals look worse here, but from a little different perspective. And the reason why is because I always go back to my stance when it comes to throwing quarterbacks out there that are rookies, right? We all know rookies can play today in the NFL. That's no secret. Okay, guys are starting in the NFL as rookies at the quarterback spot more than ever before, right? Because they are talented and the playbook is more dumbed down to fit them. So the playbook will meet them halfway along with the skill set meeting the playbook halfway. So now you combine that guys are out there week one and having success. But the reason why I always think in most, not all, but in most situations, I will go with an experienced vet is because of this reason, learning the nuances of the game of football that's outside of the football field. All right, seeing a quarterback that knows how to prepare for a game before the game, knowing how he gets settled, knowing how he watches film, knowing his call to detail, knowing just his leadership. Those are some of the things you learn from an experienced vet for a year. You learn those things. You see how he prepares. You see how he carries himself. You see how he carries himself on game day and on the football field as well. And that's why this right here is the key reason why, because if Kyler Murray was not thrown in there to be a starter in week one, and you paid a cheap price just to get a vet in the room so Kyler Murray could evolve and learn, then maybe we're not going through this. Because Kyler Murray has to realize that this is not Madden here. You're not just going to go to the NFL and run all over the yard and throw all over the yard and not have no adversity. Okay, so that's exactly why. This reason right here is the reason that I want to drive home. Why in most, not all, I get it, sometimes... You know, you are in a good situation to start week one as a rookie. But this is why most times I like that vet in the room because of this reason right there. So I would definitely go to Cardinals here and put a ball on my first lap. The reason why I would even go with them further is because this is public embarrassment. I don't know how much film Mahomes watch, to be honest with you. I know Tom Brady, he sleeps with the playbook in his bed. That's why he's the GOAT. There's a reason why he's seven rings deep right now, possibly going on eight. You know, I know Peyton Manning sleep with the playbook in his um, bed. That's why he's a top five, arguably, quarterback of all time. I don't know how much film Mahomes watch. I know he's talented. I do believe he watches film, if I had to be a guessing man, because last year he showed us the ability to adapt and be more patient. So I guess he, you know, studies the game enough to learn what to, to take what the defense gives him. But I think when you get to Kyler, this is a little bit of public embarrassment because who knows? We don't know if these other quarterbacks watches the game of football. Like, why should we have that? I mean, did any other team have to put this clause in to, to their to their quarterbacks? They, they, pro- they probably didn't. But they that doesn't mean not all the quarterbacks are watching film either. You know what I'm saying? I don't know all 32 quarterbacks are watching film. But I know the Cardinals put that in the clause and exposed Kyler Murray. And I'm not a fan of that. But if you're Kyler, you just got $230 million guaranteed. You ain't tripping. It's what it is. I blame the Cardinals. I mean, I will say, like, Kyler Murray, he has gotten better as he's progressed in the league, and I do think he, like, he wasn't a guy that struggled as a rookie, and I think, like, you, like, when you're paying him this much money, you know, you're comparing him to guys like Joe Burrow, who came in right away uh, from the beginning, like a true pro, and uh, got his team to a Super Bowl, even Justin Herbert, I think he has really benefited from playing, I know he missed uh, his first game, but coming into that second game and just running with the job. You think the Chargers regret putting Justin Herbert in to start? And I don't think the Cardinals regret that either. But at the same time, I think this, like, I, I, I see the blame on both sides. And I just don't understand from the Cardinals perspective, like, what was the rush? If he proves you wrong this year and leads you to the playoffs and stays healthy for a full 17-game season, I would feel much more comfortable paying him. And if he didn't and he was just going to come to training camp and hold in and pout, then that would have already told me everything I needed to know. And if I was the Cardinals, I wouldn't want to move on from a guy that is coming into training camp like and acting like that when he's just all worried about a contract after he just stunk it up to end uh, last season. So I do think when you give a guy a lot of money, usually – his bad habits come out after that. And if he's doing all this before he earned the contract, like it's going to be a scary thought to think about what he's going to do after he gets the money. Well, I would say this, 
they put the clause in there. So if he doesn't abide, he ain't getting paid. So I don't think those bad habits would actually come after because it's in the contract. You know, they have these funny writings, you know, but from what I understand, and I could be wrong here, I could be corrected if I'm neglecting the truth. But if you look at the clause, it hinges on him watching the film and eliminating some of those bad habits. Right, so but I would assume four hours he is nothing, special. dude. Like most quarterbacks are watching twenty hours. You know, yeah. Like like and, watching four hours is not is not a lot. And and that's on Kyler Murray too. I think a Kyler Murray. Let's say Kyler Murray a last in the league for another ten years, which I expect him to. I think he has a talent. I don't think we'll be having the same conversation. I think he would evolve into more of a mature cat. That's what I'm hoping for. I could be wrong. Some people in their 40s still act like they're 10. Okay? That's how society is in the social media era. But I have hope out there for Kyler Murray that I'm not just going to cap his ceiling on his leadership abilities. I think sometimes it takes, you know, trial and error and embarrassment to get that out of you. And I'm hoping that the car knows because they embarrassed the brother. They making this guy look like a clown out here. I hope he takes that and say, you know what? I'm going to shut these cats the hell up, and I'm a ball, and I'm going to live up to my contract. And before Zay get in here for his second lap, I do want to add this point. Why you pay Kyler Murray? Listen, I'm not a fan of giving him $230 million. Let me make that clear. But you pay the dude because the quarterback market, we get it, and I don't got to go too deep in that because I, I really watch these shows that talk about that all the time. But more so, you don't have to juggle quarterbacks. You don't have to worry about a potential holdout. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people think that Kyler Murray's actions when it came to this contract is Kyler Murray. Most of the time, it's the agent. The agent is who's pulling the strings behind the keyboard and behind the show that, you know, behind the athletes. They are putting the batteries in their back and telling them, oh, you should hold out. You shouldn't show up. And now you're in a situation where you could do two things. Well, I, right, Kyler Murray, bye. I'll just find me a quarterback to draft. That's cool. Good luck with that. Sign me a vet. That's cool. Good luck with that. The Colts out here juggling quarterbacks for the last five years. Ask them how that's coming along. You have the opportunity right now to get your quarterback, whom you know is going to be your quarterback, and who has the skills to pay the bills. No shit, Thomas. It's the issue with this is that um, with, with the vision that they're in, they don't, they don't have any room for error in this particular juncture because you look at the Rams, their potential team that could be back in the Super Bowl, potentially, you know, with the roster they have constructed. When you look at the 49ers, who I always say are one of the more, have been one of the more talented teams in the last four to five seasons, it's just in injuries has derailed their seasons. Are you talking about a healthy 49ers team? You know, I don't see the Cardinals even surpassing them, especially if Trey Lance has a tremendous um, season this year as the first year starting quarterback of this team. Um, I think when you look at what this, what both teams have to offer, and then you look at the Cardinals, you having Kyler Murray as a study, study issues is is, is embarrassing. You are in a division where two teams are, are arguably in the top ten in both categories in offense and defense, and you're over here talking about you got to study. Uh, you not you have to have a study clause in order for him to be locked into the games. That's something embarrassing. That's that's something that's it's I embarrassing the franchise too, bro. Like yeah, no, 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 the franchise is embarrassing, us. but Kyler Murray himself shouldn't be embarrassed because that kind of news is going out there. So the defensive coordinators would just throw something crazy at him every time they play each other. And, and according to the news, he wouldn't even know because he's not watching film. He's not, who knows? He could do a four hours of study. It don't mean he could do four hours of study with uh, watching defenses, four hours of studies, watching him play, watching their games. We don't know what in exactly he will do in those four hours of study because he clearly is not interested in studying the game. He's just interested in making the max dollars, which is all right, fine. But you're um, hindering your team if you're not th if you're thinking your talent alone is going to bring y'all to the promised land. Their team is good. They had, if I'm not mistaken, they were number one in scoring last year or number two because I forgot how they fell off that bad in the second half of the season. I believe it was number one in scoring last season. And you know they get to the playoffs, they get cooked, they get destroyed by the Rams. Something that was uh, crazy to even think about. So I think you know. Um, it's, it's just not right. And I think, like I said, he has to look in his division and say, do I want to, do I really want to win the Super Bowl? Because I do have to get my act together. Because the Cardinals should have been in that NFC Championship discussion just based off what they did during the season with the number one offense in the league. You know, that's something they should have already been happening. And I think the, the fact that this news comes out is just it's embarrassing all around. I understand the, Card the Cardinals look really, really bad, but Kyler Murray looks 100% worse, especially with – making that money knowing that he don't study that all. That's ridiculous. I actually uh, wanted to give some credit to my guy, Lil. He was the one that showed this, uh, shared this with us a few days ago when this contract was signed. But there was an old Kyler Murray quote uh, from a few years ago that went viral that I just wanted to uh, read out loud. I think I was uh, blessed with the cognitive skills to just go out there and just see it before it happens. 
I'm not one of those guys that's going to sit there and kill myself watching film. I don't sit there for 24 hours and break down this team and that team and watch every game because in my head, I see so much. Like, does that really sound like a guy you want to give $230 million to? And that's why when I said, like, I was somewhat surprised when I saw that the clause was included in the contract. But at the same time, I really wasn't because all the evidence we've had on Kyler Murray shows us that his leadership skills are questionable and his love for the game of football is really questionable. As kids, I'm sure a lot of us here had trouble studying for long periods of time. But the difference was that was things that we weren't really interested in. I'm sure all three of us do a lot of prep and a lot of work when it comes to this show. And when you want to succeed in the highest level of football and at the most important position, if you don't love football, you're not going to be able to do that. And the Cardinals are paying Kyler Murray to be one of those elite quarterbacks, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And there are just so many red flags and so many concerns, plus the injury problems, plus the fact that the Cardinals have fell apart the last few years at the back end of the season, it's it's a mess right now, and I'd be really nervous. I mean, that is a interesting point that you brought up, Zach, about, you know, studying and preparation because you love something. I get it. I and mean, you're right. In school, I ain't studied Jack. I still graduated on time, though, in college. You know what I'm saying? I ain't studied Jack, bro. Trust me. I did not study at all. But, um, you know, when it comes to the show, you're right. The preparation goes way before the show way before we on air and after air. So, yeah, I definitely could attest to that. But I think if you're Kyle Murray into the Cardinals, I mean, this guy was playing two sports. Guy was playing baseball. Who is to say he's still not, you know, over not playing baseball anymore? The guy's a multi-talented dude. And sometimes when you're multi-talented, you just do this joint for fun. Not saying that's the right mentality to have. But when you have so many talents, sometimes like, yeah, I'm just that talented guy. You know what I'm saying? I could dance like... Chris Brown, I could sing like I'm MJ. I could, you know, play basketball like I'm the other MJ. I could box like I'm the other M, you know, the other Tyson. You know what I'm saying? The Mike Tyson out there. So I think, you know, sometimes when you're all multi-talented and I would put Kyle in that category, you do have that ego where it's like, I could just do it in my sleep. And he needs to check that ego. And I'm pretty sure he will because his money hinges on it. But I would say this, um, back to that comment that you made, Zach, about Cleveland. And Deshaun Watson. I actually think that this deal right here, how can I say it? it? Um, blue checks the deal that Deshaun Watson got. If that's the word I could come up with, I can't come up. It verifies the Deshaun Watson deal because when you look at it, even though Watson is making, I believe, more guaranteed, you're talking about $230 million guaranteed, all of it going to Watson no matter what. For those of y'all don't know what guaranteed means, it's coming to your pocket no matter what. OK, um, Kyler Murray's is 160 million. But when you look at the the older, the older that the deal gets, Kyler Murray will actually make 500,000 more as the deal gets older. You're talking about a guy, for example, without D hop is a shell of himself. Quarterback rating goes down. Touchdowns go down. Yards go down. But with Deshaun Watson, without D hop. Subtract D-Hop from that team. He leads the league in passing yards with no number one wide receiver. Okay, so when you take that and you look at the skill set, Kyle is nice, but Deshaun Watson is up here and makes that deal look verified when you talk about it. Because even though a lot of people, the backlash came from the allegations, I would assume. So, and plus the 230 guaranteed, I think is where most of the backlash actually came from. They's like, yeah, of course you're going to upgrade at the spot. But $230 million guaranteed, we never seen it before. But now we've seen it again, and now it's going to be a trend. And now we're going to look at somebody else getting paid way more money than Kyler and Deshaun, and we're going to come back here and say, wait, what the hell are we doing? That's because that's how the quarterback market works. I know we've had plenty of conversations about Deshaun Watson since the deal happened, and you know I'm not trying to get into a full discussion. But I'll ask a simple question, and this is why I put Deshaun and Kyler, those contracts in the same category. Simply, do you trust Deshaun Watson to make the right decisions as franchise quarterback of the Cleveland Browns for the next six to seven years? And to be honest, that's where my issue with the deal came in. The fact that they're giving him that much guaranteed money when he just showed like the kind of guy he is, even though there's no confirmed evidence. We do know that Deshaun Watson was communicating with 
60 plus massage therapists in the state of Houston, which is just flat out weird. I don't know if that's the kind of guy that I want leading my team going forward, whether he's guilty or not. And when it comes to Kyler Murray, from the leadership aspect, from the working aspect, and when I just look at both guys, I just see so many red flags that I just look at the two franchises that awarded those guys that money and I say, what are you doing? It's easy to pay guys like Patrick Mahomes or even Josh Allen or Joe Burrow or Lamar Jackson when they get their money. They're trustworthy individuals and they're very good players on the field. But when I look at Kyler Murray, I don't trust him as a leader. And when I look at Deshaun Watson, I don't look him look at him as a guy who I trust to make the right decisions off the look, field. I would say this about Deshaun Watson, right? And I know we, we kind of merged into two topics here, you know, slightly. We'll get back to close this out. But when I look at Deshaun Watson compared to Kyler, Kyler's issue was, of course, as you alluded to, a little bit different. Leadership, no, no, no. Um, playoff wins, no, no, no. Um, what has he accomplished? No, no, no. It's not this. Incomplete. He turned in an incomplete assignment and got the credit. But when you talk about the Sean Watson here, and you look at the Sean Watson, talent, check. Wins, check. Playoff win, check. Okay, like he has that. And yeah, of course, he has the little issues going on that's about to be cleared away. Clear the way. I'm not going on trial with you, bro. You're going on trial, but you're not even going on trial, first of all. Let's make that clear. I don't expect Watson to, and it's hard for me to say because Watson is his own man, but I expect this to be a little thing that comes and goes. I never have to worry about him and his leadership on the football field. I never have to worry about him not making the right play on the football field. It was just this situation off the football field. And once this get taken care of, I think if he has any brains in his head that he will move on from this like Ben Watlisberger did and retire a Hall of Famer and possibly a Super Bowl champion. Zane, hey, any last words? Bring us on. Yeah, quick question. So I want to know, like, if with this situation going on, would you be interested in trying to acquire a guy like Jimmy G in case the situation goes left? If this the, the production doesn't increase, if he's still doing 20 touchdowns, 25 touchdowns a season, do you go after a guy like Jimmy G who's proven to be able to win games despite him not having the strongest arm? Well, Kevin Stefanski spoke to the media today, and he did confirm that Jacoby Brissett was the team's QB2, and if Watson does get suspended, he is going to be the guy uh, that's under center week one. But Cleveland, of course, could still uh, pivot and make a move for Jimmy Garoppolo as we get closer to the start of the season. I think the fit is there. Um, the thing is, when you look at Cleveland, they have so much talent, and I do think when it comes to the quarterback position – theoretically, if they could get an improvement from what Baker Mayfield gave them, they could be a playoff team and a threat to win uh, a lot of games going forward. But at the same time, I just question everything going on right there. It's just a lot going on. And they've been loyal to Jacoby Brissett. I would like the fit with Jimmy G. He's making a lot of money when they just uh, guaranteed Deshaun Watson all that money. I don't know if they would be able to afford it. Plus, they don't really have much draft picks to give up. So I think the fit would be there. But I, I don't expect Jimmy G to be under center uh, week one, no matter where he goes. You were talking about the Cardinals or the Browns when you talk about Jimmy G, um, Zay? On both teams, actually. But um, that, that's what's really... Yeah, that's why I was confused. I, I thought you was talking about the, the Cardinals. Should they bring him in? You know, I think um, if you look for both teams, you know, you can start off where Zach left off. I'm not doing it if I'm the Browns. You know what I'm saying? I'm just not unless he gets suspended for a year. Then maybe, but then again, I guess so maybe because he will be playing and then you have to worry about that $20 million contract that will be coming with him because he's not. it's not like he's going to be on a bench all year. He's going to be a one-year rental. So in the case that he's suspended for a year, which we still haven't found out yet, that's a whole other topic for another day. What the hell, my, my judge... Uh, my girl over there, um, Sue Robinson, is going to come up with. But in the case that he suspended eight games half a season, hell no. Because um, I'm not paying you. You know what I'm saying? First of all, give you a pick, you know, to trade for you. If you get cut, I, I don't even think I would do it because you're making, you know, um, you're having some money that's coming with you. And it's only going to be for half a season. I just wouldn't do in it. In that I case, you just roll with Jacoby. But if I'm the Cardinals, Nah, I mean, you paid this guy $230 million. Why the hell yeah. would you bring in Jimmy G? I, I won't see that for the life of me. So, yeah, I'll just leave it there.